is damaged, but it's too far away. I can't get video of it. Um, but the police officers say they won't be letting anybody get close or through 51 anytime soon until these power lines are cleaned up. Okay, Ronnie, uh, thank you for the report. That's uh, just another confirmation. In Northern Jackson County, um, to put it bluntly, is a bit of a mess right now from debris that has been blown into multiple roadways. We, the Sheriff's Department tells us major highways to back roads have been affected from the debris from this tornado that moved through there, uh, and, and now they're starting to stop traffic. So if you had plans, say so you've got to get to work, or there's some place you have to get, you're not going to get there through there. You're going to have to think about an alternative route. No doubt about that. And, um, you know, switching gears is probably the last time uh, we may talk about this and let you switch over to, because uh, this is kind of moving out of our TV market here. Um, but right now, this is the storm once again in northern White County moving towards Crossville. Kind of wanted to glance at this once again just because we do have a... Uh, a nickel sized hail report, but also widespread power outages are being reported in the community. And we can kind of see that in rotation there tightening up. Once again, we did have a report there of a, uh, I believe a tornado was that confirmed near uh, Enfield. Mm -hmm. So that this storm now has pushed off to the east and would be um, moving very close to Crossville. Let's go back to the, uh, the cell there in southeast Missouri right now. And the reason we're going to go back is we do have a new tornado warning, I believe. Um, that was just, I'm sorry, a severe thunderstorm severe. warning there. That is for the hail on the north side here. Let's go ahead and show here. There we go. Okay. So we've got the the very bright purples, those those almost blacks showing up there right now in northern Cape Girardeau County, um, just north of Oak Ridge. Um, and that is likely dropping some very significant hail. Um, getting ready to cross there, um, I-55 and crossing 61 as well. And this would be moving towards northern and northwest sections of Union County and southern and southwest sections of Jackson County. Um, so in southern Illinois, that's Grand Tower, that's LaRue, that's Wolf, Wolf Lake. Um, that does also include Alto Pass and Pomona. I know you start to get out of the bottoms and get up in the hills there, um, but uh, some very large hail likely with that storm cell. Uh, can we look at winds within that storm too? Because um, also in the warning text, they had mentioned the fact that yes, it is for large hail, but also we have to do with the fact that there's also probably some damaging winds with it also. So just kind of want to see uh, what radar is picking up on at this point as it begins to progress uh, out of southeast Missouri now into southern Illinois. Yeah, we can kind of see that here. Um, it looks like we can kind of see some of it. It still looks like somewhat broad rotation, but possibly tightening up. Um, we've started to see some brighter returns there. And what we're talking about there is, is basically just north or very close to Oak Ridge. Um, you can kind of see the, the winds that are going toward the radar there. Uh, that's kind of what we're looking there in the green color. Um, whereas once again, the reds are actually going away from radar. So uh, we are starting to see some rotation there. It is somewhat broad at this point. Um, but once again, just a few minutes ago, we had a funnel cloud report out of that storm cell. So still showing some signs that it may be recycling. Um, and just because there isn't a tornado and hasn't been a tornado reported on the ground um, doesn't necessarily mean there's not one on the ground right now as well. We are going to keep a very close eye on that storm. Um, I believe that storm is going to stay alive into southern Illinois, and I think that's going to come in in Jackson. I think it's going to have a really good chance of moving into Williamson. Uh, and it looks like it is a very efficient hail producer. Uh, large hail could be an issue. And there's an old, old forecasting rule that if you look around and find large hail, you better look around because there's a tornado somewhere. The two just sort of go together. So I, even though we don't have a report of a tornado on it, there is a tornado warning on it. Uh, I think we have to watch this storm closely. I hope everyone in southern Jackson County will stay with us or stay with some form of information so that you are aware of what this storm is doing as it moves in and through southern Jackson County. Um, Jim, something I want to pass along here. Um, El Verado School District um, has canceled classes tomorrow um, because, again, that's typically around the Ava, uh, Kimball Hill area. They kind of cover that region, um, but they are canceling classes because of uh, extensive damages, several homes destroyed, power outages. Um, they don't know of any injuries at this point, but again, classes have been canceled for the El Verado School District. Again, that's El Verado School District 196. That's from Superintendent Kevin Spade. And that will be uh, closed for Wednesday um, on, on that one. We're, uh, news folks are gathering as well. Uh, we'll start to hopefully uh, present you with some of the images we've picked up. We have crews out, of course, Tony Lawback, our weather warrior and, and just great chaser has been out uh, and involved with uh, this cell um, 
pretty extensively and, and will provide us with a little more insight. He is redirecting right now and trying to get uh, on this storm that is moving into Grand Tower right now. The last time I talked to him, he was in Jackson County and getting closer. We'll get reports from him on that one uh, very soon as well. But uh, we'll start to uh, put some of these reports together for you and pass them along. As Rachel was just telling us, El Verado School District uh, now has canceled for tomorrow just because of the amount of damage in northern Jackson County. Uh, and travel there is, is going to be a real bear for quite some time. Uh, it's difficult to get all that cleaned up, especially in the middle of the night. And no doubt. Um, new report here on this storm cell currently in northern Cape Girardeau County. Um, storm spotters saying that it was a, they're reporting and seeing a very large wall cloud. So that kind of goes back to that, what we were talking about, very broad rotation, not necessarily having a tornado on the ground, um, but still trying to get its act together, still trying to grow and still trying to develop right now. Um, once again, we're also seeing signs of some very large hail. Um, they're right on Highway 61, um, very close to I-55, um, and this would be impacting and moving into parts of southern Illinois. That would be um, Jackson County and northern Union County here. Um, I would guess probably in the next 20 minutes or so, if not sooner, um, over towards Wolf Lake, LaRue, and um, Grand Tower. Yeah, I, I'm just pulling a, a projected path on that. The Doppler radar gives us projections uh, on the, the direction of movement, and this one currently is projected to run just about right smack over the top of Grand Tower. And then that projection heads on out to very close to Carbondale. And then as we move it into uh, Williamson County, uh, then we're starting to talk about the Tri-C area, Cambria, Carterville, Craneville, uh, and, and through Culp in there, Heron, Johnston City. We're getting into that time of night. A lot of folks are wondering, can I go to sleep? Uh, how much more longer do I have to watch? If I just mention the community you live in or one that's very close to you, I encourage you to stay aware, stay alert for a, a little while longer. Let's get a better grasp on this storm uh, and, and the exact path. And is it going to produce a tornado or is it not? Nick's done a great job of showing you that this storm is probably producing large hail, whether it's producing a tornado or not. Uh, and you still need to protect yourself there because as we saw the report coming in from Hamilton County, large hail went through there and broke windows in a home and you can be injured just from that flying glass if you're too close to it. So we need folks in southern Jackson and western Williamson County to stay aware of the storm even though currently not warned. Yeah, no doubt. I'm kind of switching over here to one of our exclusive products here um, and showing you what we call shear rate. And, um, it, you know, what we were looking at a little while ago with the storm that actually produced a tornado, um, the shear rate here not quite as strong. And that kind of goes back to this storm right now in northern Cape Girardeau County, um, showing signs of some very broad rotation. Of course, we had the report there. And as I say that, we get an update and the shear strengthens just a little bit. So we still think that this storm is getting its act together, still poses a uh, very big threat as well, um, getting some very large hail, likely up as far north as Old Appleton. Um, and also probably into now southern, uh, I believe that is Perry County, um, would be moving towards Grand Tower. Okay, we're going to switch gears now with you. Uh, we've got uh, everyone collected. Uh, the news folks have joined us at the desk. They're going to take over. We will be back with any reports uh, as we move through the next half hour or so and certainly keep you up to date with this severe weather situation as it continues to develop. All right, a, break, a big night for breaking news as storms hit for miles around. Good evening on a very busy weather night. Yeah, that's right. We've had several weather reports, damage reports, and at least one confirmed tornado in northwestern Jackson County, Illinois, and Perry County, Missouri. Perryville, Missouri Fire Department also confirming at least one storm-related death tonight. But for right now, let's go to uh, Royalton and Evie Allen, who's standing by in the Franklin County town with some house damage there. Evie, tell us what you've got. That's right. We were actually driving on our way headed into Cesar when we actually ran over something. We weren't sure what it was when we stopped. We noticed a crowd of, pol of people and some red lights and we apparently are standing in front of a home that was completely destroyed. Now we are in Royalton, the rural parts of Royalton, so we hadn't quite made it into Royalton just yet. There was a woman who had a fiance here and her child here um, before the storm and then they went into the city to their mom's house to stay in the cellar. But she said she had a really bad feeling. The 
homeowner did. So after the storms passed, she came here to check on her animals and the house was completely gone. And I don't know if you guys can see behind me, but there is nothing but debris. There's canned goods, there's pieces of metal, wood all over the place. She was actually relatively calm when I talked to her. So she she's, uh, I guess, holding up the best that you can during a circumstance like this. Now, Perry County EMA has been here and the deputies have been here to kind of assess the damage, just helping out Franklin County here um, as well. But there are there are lots and lots of debris pieces everywhere. They're even in the trees. They're all up in the trees and you can't really see it too well because it's really dark out here but there's there's things in the trees that you can't really make out what they are but it's a lot of stuff in the trees and all kinds of things out here now she did tell me that she did not find her animals so at a time like this you just hope they are safe in royalton evie allen news three evie our, thank you yeah our continuing coverage tonight continues with the severe weather now takes us to our man out in the weather. That's right, News 3 meteorologist and weather warrior Tony Lawback watched the storms start forming over southeast Missouri late today and followed them across the river into Illinois. He joins us from the Virgins area right now. Tony, what are you seeing over there? Well, I have uh, just cleared the Virgins area, actually. It started to make my way south toward uh, Route 13 in preparation for that other storm that is moving out of southeast Missouri. Unfortunately, this is just the first round of many that we are seeing. Uh, earlier today, that same storm that did all that damage in Perryville moved across the river. I intercepted it just outside of Ava and actually followed it over toward the Virgins area where it crossed the road probably about a half a mile in front of me, destroying a home right off to the side of 127. That tornado continued did damage along Elkville Road to the west of Elkville, so a lot of damage kind of on a line. Unfortunately, though, from what I am understanding, the tornado itself missed both Virgins and Elkville for the most part. Again, scattered damage around those towns. But uh, Ava, I'm still hearing unconfirmed reports out from there. But this tornado that moved through uh, was on the ground for quite a while, and it was very visible in the lightning and power flashes. Uh, you see some of the video there, some of the transformers that were actually going that up as that tornado went through. Right now, again, I am uh, between Murfreesboro and Carbondale on Route 13, watching that storm that's coming out of southeast Missouri right now. That one obviously going to be the next uh, impacting storm for us here in southern Illinois. That one I'm thinking is probably going to be uh, somewhere on 13, uh, unfortunately, if uh, it continues its track. But that right now is the storm I am trying to get in position to get right now. I'll toss it back to you guys in the studio, live from the uh, Jackson County area, Tony Lawback, News 3. Real quick before you go, we're seeing some, some, what, some what looks like a, a destroyed house. You sent a picture earlier of what looked like a barn. Is that is that in that same Virgins area that you were talking about? That is correct, Dennis. That, uh, that is the structure that was on the west side of 127. Uh, kind of got a look at it uh, once uh, some of the rain cleared and we were able to walk around. Uh, it looked like the home, it, it looked like a home, uh -huh. uh, total destroyed. Um, I did see the occupants of the home. They were okay and they were retrieving their pets um, as I left the scene. Um, from what I understand, I think most of them made it. Uh, so good news all around from that. But uh, again, the occupants, the the residents uh, of that home took shelter and uh, survived without any injury. All right, Tony, thank you. All right, now we want to go to News 3's Ronnie LaForge. Last we checked, she was headed toward Ava. Ronnie, where are you now and what are you seeing? On State Highway 149 headed to Mulkytown. About five minutes ago, I just left Elkville and police were not, they were directing traffic off of Highway 51 because from in between Elkville and Dow, there's apparently a lot of power lines down and live wires, and police would not even let anyone get close. But right off of, high, like right as you're leaving Elkville, I hear there is a house off to your left damaged, um, and police, I can see the sirens and uh, the police lights over there. Um, apparently that's pretty severe. Um, but I am headed up to Mulkey Town where we hear there is more damage, and from there I will be headed to Dow where I am also hearing there is lots of damage. Yet uh, we hear that that area between Christopher and DuCoin is, is, has suffered some pretty heavy damage, so, so be very careful there, okay? Okay, thank you guys so much. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Ronnie. We do now want to show you some video that we're just now getting in from Perryville. Now, this is where we had um, some damage reports from that area. You can see it here. This is a house right uh, along the highway. This is where the, the totally where the roof was blown off. This is a video from our, our, our news partner, KTVI in St. Louis. I was watching this just a little, just a few minutes ago. Uh, to the house just totally top floor, top roof, just everything just 
totally just blown totally off. Uh, there's a house uh, just to the left of this too, uh, where that also is missing its roof. This is again uh, close. To the, if you see in the background those those flashing lights, those are uh, first responders along the area of I-55 and Highway 51, where the tornado came through and turned talk cars. Video, uh, cars just scattered everywhere, turned over. Uh, here's the video here of the big pileup along I-55. This is at about the 100, the 133 mile marker uh, in the Missouri, uh, the, the interstate in Missouri there. Uh, this video just showing cars tossed everywhere. We understand there were several injuries, people climbing out of ditches mm -hmm. covered in mud after this is over. Yeah, also, we, again, we did hear from Perryville Fire Department. They have confirmed one death. They wouldn't say where exactly, if it was from this crash or another incident in the area, but they did say it was a storm-related death and several injuries. Also, Perry County Emergency Management in Missouri, Perry County, Missouri, has confirmed that they are doing right now search and rescue operations. And so that's the very latest that we have heard from that. That area. is ongoing. And also we have uh, just heard, heard in the last few minutes that Perry County schools tomorrow will close. Uh, there will be no school in Perry County, Missouri tomorrow. Uh, again, we have one death confirmed, uh, several people injured and the search and rescue ongoing along I-55 where it crosses Highway 51 in uh, Perry County, Missouri right near Perryville. Uh, we now have uh, Brandon Morano that is on his way to that area. He joins us now on the phone. Brandon, what are you seeing where you are? Yes, we're on our way to Perryville right now, but uh, we were actually in Nashville earlier this evening. And on our way, we actually had to stop at a neighbor's house, or just, just a random house uh, off of 127 uh, because the storm was, was moving our direction. And then a little bit later, we ran into a tree that was, and you're looking at the same video I am right now, a tree that was completely covering the road uh, just south, uh, or just north, I apologize, of Route 4. Uh, yeah, we're seeing Jackson that right now, Brandon. Randolph County line. Yeah, we're seeing that right now. Uh, anybody injured in this? Uh, nobody injured uh, that, that we heard. Uh, we did talk to Illinois State Police who also reported a propane tank uh, that blew over into a house. They had a section of uh, 127 shot off as well. No injuries there, but there was a house uh, on this road just, uh, just north of Route 4 uh, that witnesses told us was completely ripped to shreds. I mean, half the house gone. So uh, luckily no injuries in that either, but uh, we'll keep sure to keep you guys up to date uh, with, with what we see as we're uh, heading to Perryville here. Okay, yeah, Brandon, we will check back with you once we once you get to Perryville in that horrible, horrible accident along I-55. Thank you very much. Now let's take you to Benton, where uh, one of our Facebook viewers uh, sent us this video of a uh, transformer just going crazy. This is fairly common when, when you have high winds and storm damage going on. Uh, transformers will go off just like firecrackers like this. It's, uh, this is what you call a, a, a arcing transformer. And it just basically, this is over near the Freds in, uh, in the middle of uh, uh, center of Benton uh, in Franklin County. Now we want to go over back to our News 3 weather team uh, with the very latest on what we're seeing out there, the current conditions, Jim. And trying to stay uh, with you and keep you uh, ahead of these storms as they continue to move in. We are not done. Uh, a storm has moved across the region. Uh, it has produced uh, multiple reports of tornado, multiple reports of damage. That one is gone. It has crossed the Wabash River. Uh, we'll revisit it tomorrow. But for now, our attention shifting to a storm that is really kind of centered right over the top of Grand Tower. My guess is from what we're looking at on radar, likely some very large hail over Grand Tower right now. And a, a storm that when we look at the winds inside of it, looking for wind shear, we see just enough to think that there's still that chance if it strengthens a little bit, if it concentrates just a little bit more, uh, we might see this one produce a tornado. We've seen one report of a funnel cloud from this cell. We certainly see the notching type feature that we're looking for, a little bit of a hooking type feature there on the back bottom of it. There you go when we look for the, uh, the velocities and looking for that shear and looking for the color-coded winds of greens next to reds, and you can see it's there. Not as defined as the last storm, certainly, and that's one reason the National Weather Service has a severe thunderstorm warning on this cell and not a tornado warning. But we'll watch it because if it continues to develop, look where it's headed. We're talking about a cell that's over Grand Tower right now. 
probably moving towards the Pomona area, Macanda, possibly Carbondale if it would make a little drift to the north. Right now, maybe uh, headed a little south of Carbondale, but that's why I'm very interested in the storm and think we have to stay focused on it. And even if it's not producing a tornado and doesn't, it is likely producing some large hail, and we know it is producing, if it's not producing large hail, boy, is it raining under it, because the returns we see in it all the way through the pinks, the purples, and into the blacks. That is intense radar returns and likely is tied to very large hail. You can see an update coming in there that's showing even more of the black color coating to the top of the scale, and that is probably from what is bouncing off of large hailstones, and that area is moving, again, away from Grand Tower and towards Pomona and towards Carbondale and eventually towards Carterville and Cambria. So we'll be watching this storm very closely. It is currently a severe thunderstorm warning on it, but that's one of those warnings that comes with a, a little bit of text in it that says, Stilk, a possible tornado. So we'll continue to track this storm. Uh, well, we're going to track it all evening long because there's nothing to make us believe this storm will just move a little bit and die. It is likely going to move all the way across southern Illinois, and it is likely going to produce some severe weather, whether it's damaging straight winds, large hail, or the small possibility it produces a tornado just like the lasso. So this is what we'll be watching for the next few hours and more storms developing in southeast Missouri. We still have a long ways to go with this system. All right, thank you, Jim. All right, now we do want to send it back again to Evie Allen. She is live for us in Franklin County covering the damage there. Evie, what are you seeing? I know last time you showed us a damaged home. Are you still in that area? Okay, we can see Evie, but we can't hear mm -hmm. her. We will uh, fix that and get back to you. I want to share with you just a few things that we've been hearing about uh, in terms of damage and, and, and accidents and things. Uh, in Campbell Hill, we understand there were injuries on uh, Highway 151. EMS was en route uh, just a short time ago. In Oakville, we had a car overturned with five people trapped at uh, uh, Highway 164 at the 38 mile marker. Uh, Jackson County had a head on crash. It was working in, at the Union School Road and in Royalton, uh, we had part power lines arcing, uh, things like that uh, going on. We also understand El Verado schools also out along with the Perry County, Missouri schools tomorrow. Yeah, and then another reporter also mentioning northern Jackson County, just major highways there, debris on the roadways across there, so be careful. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you're not trying to travel tonight, but keep that in mind. We do want to try Evie one more time out live in Franklin, uh, Franklin County tonight. Evie? Hey there guys, sorry about that. I hope you can hear me this time, but we were actually asked to move by the sheriff's deputy so that there's so we could be safe from power lines. There are power lines all over the place, but I wanted to show you we are still in front of the house. What we see here in the ditches, there's a, a piece of the door. There's debris everywhere, wood paneling everywhere. So you can see that the house has completely blown away. We don't know to where because obviously it's very dark out here and she had some animals that she was very worried about. Now the owner was at her mother's house in Royalton in a storm cellar, keeping safe while her house was here with some damage. Now, now, we don't know to the extent of how bad things are. We just know that the house is blown away. There is a drain that seems to be running water and a pipe that seems to be running water out of it. But there is things everywhere, canned goods, even across the road. There are things there. We are keeping an eye on any other uh, things that we might find out here in Royalton. Evie Allen, News 3. Evie, thank you very much. Let's take you now to the... Uh to the uh, uh, the map, the outage map for Ameren. Now we know we also know that Ameren doesn't supply power for everybody. We have a lot of regional co-ops here. But if you look at this map, this shows you uh, pretty much. It looks like it's uh, sort of the Jackson, Perry, uh, Franklin area, and also parts of, of, of a good, good section of Franklin County also uh, without power at this time. Uh, 9,500 people around the state, but you also have to remember that we had that damaging storm up in northern Illinois, LaSalle right. County, so there's going to be, that's going to be mixed in there, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, that also was uh, unfortunately a deadly storm in northern, northern Illinois as mm -hmm. well. We had one death reported up there, multiple injuries as well earlier in the day. Again, just to recap some of the damage that we're seeing, or at least the school closures, Perry County, Missouri, school closed and also El Verado school district both of those are closed for tomorrow so something to keep in mind out there as well and let's take you back down to our weather team and uh, with the very latest on this storm that was last we heard uh, moving over Grand Tower headed towards Pomona and Carbondale 
the reasons that we wanted to, to come back over here and show you was the velocity scan here is tightened and we just recently got a report here um, from a train spotter and actually saying that there was a visual tornado on the ground currently with this storm near Grand Tower. A couple reports of some very large hail near Grand Tower as well, some golf ball sized hail. If we're watching the area though, and the rotation here looks like it's still fairly broad, um, not discounting the spotter's report of a tornado on the ground at all though. Um, but you can see this area and it's a fairly broad area of rotation. Once again, we see the greens going towards the radar, the reds going away from radar. And this is gonna continue to push off to the east north east. Um, so if you happen to live in Pomona and even up the line, you live in Carbondale and McCanda, you need to be thinking about heading to your safe spot. Now, uh, once again, there is no tornado warning currently on this cell. We just had a spotter, though, um, confirmed that he thought that there was a uh, tornado, at least visually trying to see a tornado on the ground. Um, says it's just west uh, nine miles of Grand Tower. Um, so that would be tracking very close to Grand Tower. Once again, the rotation here pretty broad. Looks like it's likely passed over Route 3, um, continuing to push off to the east, starting to get out of the bottoms and starting to get into the hills there. Let's switch back over here and we'll switch it. We'll give it back over to Dennis here in just a second. Wanted to show you the areas that we're also watching here just north of Grand Tower. This is in southern Jackson County. Um, some very, very large hail likely falling with this storm. Kind of in the area I'm circling here when you start seeing those purples and those blacks. This is starting to move towards 127. This is starting to move towards Carbondale as well. Latest scan coming in there and you can see that that continues to push off to the north and east. So we're going to continue to track these um, and if we have any more updates, uh, we'll give another radar update here in just a few minutes. I have a quick question for you, Nick. If you, if you, were, if you were in Carbondale right now or the area just south and to the west of Carbondale, this would be a good time for you to be taking shelter, no? You, you know out about it. Um, you know, don't hesitate. These things are moving so fast. We've seen it all night long so far that um, just because there may not be a tornado action on the ground doesn't mean there isn't one on the ground right now, or at least there's not one that's been reported here. But yeah, you're exactly right. If you are southwest of Carbondale or you are in Carbondale right now, go ahead and start to head to your safe spot. You live in a mobile home. You need to get somewhere. Um, it's a good time to head there now. Murfreesboro as well and then Cambria and some of these other places yeah, this, along the line. This cell looks like it may pass just to the south of Murfreesboro. You may okay. see some very uh, large hay in mm -hmm. Murfreesboro, but at least the rotation looks like it's probably going to pass south of there. Okay, thank you very much, Nick. Um, let's take another look at this video we've got, got coming in from Perryville, Missouri. This is the, where the, uh, the accident happened. We've got uh, right now, the, this is the home right off of I-55 where the, where the roof was just totally sheared off of this home. You can see what looks like a closet and a, maybe a bathroom and a, and, a, and, a, and a bedroom there. This is now the section of I-55 where the bad accident happened. The tornado tore right through as traffic was going through, cars were scattered everywhere. We have reports of people climbing out of muddy ditches as their cars were tossed like so many toys from a mean child. Mm, yeah, just lots of damage reports coming out of that area tonight. As we've mentioned before, that we also have one confirmed death. There is search and rescue ongoing efforts tonight, that search and rescue, because again, just one confirmed death. We, they have mentioned that this may, um, that number may increase. Well, we just looking from those pictures, right, you would expect right. it to increase. So um, there's, this is something they're definitely actively working on, as well as closing schools for tomorrow in Perry County, Missouri to um, make sure that they can get people safely where they are and not having to move them in any of this damage. The damage has been fairly widespread all the way from, from Missouri into southern Illinois uh, in, 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 in several areas, numerous counties. Uh, Perry County is in, in St. Genevieve is where the storm started to start, sort of get, get its act together and then start moving across. And then other smaller storms moved through, including the one that hit Perryville. Uh, we have... Uh, also uh, damage in Ava and, and also Elkville and uh, Campbell Hill and Oakville and Jackson County. Uh, we're just hearing now that Trico, uh, the, the Trico area, the J Jackson uh, Perry uh, where Campbell Hill is, those uh, folks, uh, students, they will not have school tomorrow. More late breaking news right now. We need to get over to weather for the latest update there. Jim. Uh, a new tornado warning in from the National Weather Service. This one uh, on the strong cells we were watching moving towards and into western Kentucky. So currently you have a tornado warning now in effect for the southern parts, extreme southern parts of Graves County and also the northern part of Weekly County. Uh, this one again, when we go looking for the wind shear, looking for rotation inside the storm, uh, this one pretty visible. No report of a tornado on the ground with this one. This is a radar indicated possible tornado. 
but something that is going to have to be monitored. Folks in Mayfield, this cell looks like it is going to stay south of you. Folks in Murray, you need to be paying attention to the cell because as they have been moving, and I'll put this one in motion, uh, we'll let the animation run, uh, you'll see the warning pop in here. Uh, this cell definitely has an eastward component to its move. You kind of see it there just in the last couple of frames, but look at the explosive growth. Just in about 15 minutes, you go from not much showing up on radar as far as winds go, uh, it starts maybe a little south of Union City there and then becomes much more organized, much more highlighted uh, and following that path that is likely going to take it through southern Graves County and, and I think will eventually move into western Callaway County uh, where currently there is a severe thunderstorm warning in effect but not a tornado warning. The tornado warning currently uh, for Weekly County, uh, the northern part of Weekly County and the southern part of Graves County here uh, south of Mayfield. Quickly Isn't look. that going to be around the area of Dresden and maybe maybe even north and south Fulton? Uh, you so, can see it's already passed by Fulton. Oh, okay. Uh, has already moved through that area. Uh, again, uh, I, I think the, the population center we're probably looking at of impact here would be Murray okay. if it stays together that far over. Was a strong storm when it went through Fulton. Mm -hmm. uh, no reports of any damage. And again, no report of a tornado with this one. Uh, it's all uh, radar indicated, but as we've seen tonight, uh, the radar has been uh, pretty spot on uh, on picking these cells up. Uh, real quickly, uh, we've passed along that warning. Uh, we're going to talk more about the cell moving through Jackson County in just a little bit. Uh, but I understand Brandon Morano is back with us. Uh, Brandon, I was told you're in Chester. Is that right? Where are you at? What you see? They're still working on getting Brandon in here. Uh, Brandon, uh, understand you're out, uh, you've got a report to pass along to us. Where are you? What do you see? Jim, we're in Chester right now and things are pretty calm here as you can see, but on our way up here we ran into a, a quite a bit of damage there. Uh, just to kind of recap for you, they're on North Mudline Road, uh, just north of Route 4 as we were on our way up here. That's on the Jackson and Randolph County line. There's a huge tree down in the middle of the road completely blocking the road. Now, are there, there are no cops right now uh, present on that road as far as blocking it off. So if you're driving uh, up near the Jackson County line uh, right there near Route 4, you want to make sure to watch out because we actually uh, almost hit it ourselves on the way up here. We're, up to, we're on our way to Perryville right now where that uh, horrible accident uh, happened on Interstate 55, Jim. To uh, Brandon for the report, um, back to radar uh, and the cell we're watching move through uh, southern Jackson County right now. Currently a severe thunderstorm warning on this. I'll let the animation run one more time so you can see the direction of movement has moved away from Grand Tower and now moving toward Carbondale. We are certainly uh, concerned any time. Uh, again, we see this highlighted winds green in, red out, uh, and showing uh, the possibility of rotation. This is a little bit broad to say that this would be a tornado, but certainly there's a rotation inside the storm itself. If this would become a little more concentrated, uh, a cell that we think could produce a tornado at any time. They tell me there's a new warning issued, uh, issued on this cell, correct? Okay, so there is now a tornado warning in effect for this cell. We'll switch over to a view that's a little more uh, probably common to you now. It still looks like uh, on the north side of this, this storm is probably producing some very large hail. I have a little bit uh, extra concern now. I, I'm going to zoom in here even tighter because we were just talking before we came back of where we think this tornado could possibly be. And... Uh, where it's going and we think it may be somewhere in this area and well, there's the warning painting in uh, right now I'm going to get rid of that so we can keep this clean so we think it's somewhere tied close to uh, what's showing up just north of Pomona maybe has moved just uh, a little bit northeast of there uh, and then if we take a look at where we think that's going to move it becomes the south side of Carbondale and of course the big concern there is the SIU campus. So certainly encouraging anyone on the SIU campus uh, especially, but all of Carbondale as I'll widen the view out here for you. Now under a tornado warning, I'll put the warning back in for you. So you can see Murfreesboro, you're not in the tornado warning, 
you still have a chance of seeing very large hail. Could be on top of Murfreesboro right now. Uh, but the concern here is between Pomona and Carbondale. What we see uh, is fairly well defined and I think uh, fairly strong rotation uh, inside this storm. Certainly see the wind shear defining it. Uh, and that would again be uh, the area we're looking at right in here. And as it continues that movement to the northeast, basically following this line on the top, it should run it uh, through Carbondale and especially focused uh, on the south side, uh, a little bit of the southwest side as well, uh, and very close to the SIU campus. So uh, get word to anyone you know there. Again, the emergency managers tell us texting is much better than calling. Uh, if you're using a cell phone right now because it uses less data and has a better chance of going through. But let's make sure everyone on the south side of Carbondale and all over Carbondale, but we've got to take care of those students, um, uh, a group that maybe doesn't pay quite as much uh, attention to uh, severe weather, and we need to let them know there is a chance of a tornado moving very close to them in Carbondale, close to SIU. Uh, reports coming in to us of large hail falling in Murfreesboro right now, and that ties right back to what we were looking at on radar and that's those returns getting above the pinks and purples. Uh, and where we're talking about these black returns, we think much of that area, when we see those black returns, we think much of that is probably large hail. That tends to fall maybe a little on the north side of the storm, and a tornado, if it does occur, tends to occur a little more on the south side of the storm. And we think it might be tied to that notch right there. And if I change back to velocities, you can see that actually works out that at times I would maybe tweak it just a little bit to right there. Uh, but we start to hone in on a little closer where we think it might be. Uh, and that's going to be a little north of Cedar Lake because now we're going to tie it right in here. Uh, and then and there's an update. You can see just how much it moves in just a couple of minutes uh, as that new update comes in. I also see a, a new warning posted now, so I'm going to widen the view. And we can see that now a severe thunderstorm warning does include Murfreesboro, where large hail is being reported right now. Marion, you're now in a severe thunderstorm warning. Carterville, Heron. Uh, the Tri-C area, Cambria, uh, Culp, Carterville, Craneville, all in the severe thunderstorm warning on a storm that uh, we have a report is producing large hail along Route 13 already. Uh, and no reports of a tornado on the ground. I haven't seen a report of a tornado on this. Have you guys? No, we, the, the we had the spotter report just a little while ago near Grand Tower. Beyond that, no, we haven't had a new update. We haven't had a report. Uh, lots of pictures, lots of reports coming in of quarter to even golf ball sized hail um, reported out of this cell. That's the areas now. Uh, one of those reports was quarter sized hail in Murfreesboro. And I believe we had a golf ball sized hail report there uh, coming in somewhat uh, close to Murfreesboro as well. Okay, and, and possibly one reason for no report of wind damage or a tornado. One solution is, is that there isn't one first. We have to acknowledge that. But even if there is, when we're talking about north of Pomona, we're talking about some of the prettiest country in southern Illinois, but also hilly and rural and not a lot of folks that are out that way. Uh, and if we would have power outages, they would have a very difficult time communicating reports to us anyway. So we can't assume anything at this point. We just know there's a tornado warning. We see signatures that say if there is not a tornado right now, there could be, and that's between Pomona and Carbondale and probably moving into Carbondale.